I just need to pull you up so I can see all of your comments if you're not here yet. This one. There we go. Nearly there. No, I haven't even done a bobbin yet. Hi, Shelly. Not terribly organised today. Not going to lie to you. Um, but that's fine. I had to run out to the horses this morning and put their rugs on because it was raining and it's going to be cold. Hello, everybody. Welcome. You're all popping in. I love it. Um, so I'm doing... Actually, I don't... I think I want to use blue. I think I want black. I'm making a siren, which is the beach bag, for a little boy. And they've picked the Avengers fabric. So that's what we're doing today. I know I've done a lot of sirens live, but it is a popular bag. Oh, you're in your mobile. That's pretty cool. I really need a better solution for my thread. It's all just kind of thrown in this drawer. Poor thread. Ugh, right. So I actually have to make uh, quite a few of these. One lady has ordered three in all different prints. And one I'm going to make for my bestie for Christmas. Because she loves the beach. And if you notice, I always just pull the threads through because I am lazy. Hi, everybody that just popped in. Um, I have more claw-like nails uh, today. And I have to say, I am quite loving them for sewing-related things. Considering I only get nails for sewing, they're doing quite well. All right, so I have pre-ironed everything. So this is the top loop where the thing, um, the cord goes through. So I put uh, a medium woven stabilizer and that and the exterior pockets and the main body pieces get a firm interfacing. So I put my Hefty, which is Violin 1050F. Also in another brand, it's called Form Fuse 1600. Depends on where you shop. Um, and because I'm using waterproof, lining canvas for the lining um i don't require any to face on that which makes me very happy so these ones will be floppier uh, but because it's the front pocket it doesn't matter but then these parts here because it's a main exterior piece it's got the violin now it doesn't look like it's holding up well now but it will once it's a bag they always do um so this is siren this pattern this is my beach bag. So like everything, we're going to put right sides together and stitch them down. I have done quite a few lives of this. Uh, so I do apologize if you're sick of watching the same bag over and over. But I have a lot of orders to get through today. So I need to really get onto that. Because I'd like to reopen up my custom orders before Christmas. Um, I'd also just like to make some bags for my website that I feel like making. So, we'll see. Hi Miriam, and you're welcome. I like to put the waterproof canvas on top when I sew. I don't know why. Sometimes I like to do it the other way, but today apparently we're doing it this way. And I'm sewing with a half inch seam allowance. I can give out that information because it's my pattern and I'll do what I want. I usually don't give out information of other people's patterns though. Trim off the tails, throw them in the bin. It's always good to have your bin just off to the side. I promise it really does help. So I'm going to crease that and then fold it over. Hi Michelle. 
It'd be so cool to have someone to sew with. There's not really anybody on base that sews. Uh, but my my neighbor now, um, she got a cricket machine or cry cut, depending on how you pronounce that. I say cricket because it's got the little cricket ears. But anyway, um, so she's been over. She was over yesterday so I could help her to learn how to use it. So that was pretty fun. Apparently we're just going to chain stitch everything because chain stitching is quicker. For anyone that doesn't know that yet. Hello, mother. Oh, anybody that's from Australia that's here, do you know where I can get real tree camo fabric in a cotton? My brother wants a shirt made out of real tree camo, and for the life of me, I cannot find it. Yes, I tried Google. The only place I can seem to find it is in America, and I was really hoping to get some in Australia so it would be here in time for Christmas. So if anybody knows where I can find that, please let me know. That'd be awesome. Yes, I'm quite early today. I'm about 40, 40 minutes early. Um, just because I have stuff to do. So I'm trying my hardest to get it all done. So now I'm just going to lay this over the top uh, and baste around the edge. Basting is your best friend. I love basting everything ever. Uh, everything's much easier to work with when it's decided it's just one um, layer. So I baste. The downside to basting is you do use more thread and I will run out of thread pretty soon, but it'll be fine. I'm really not super worried about it. So this is the Avengers fabric that Spotlight had. I'm not sure if they still have it, but when it come out, I think I bought like two or three meters because I assumed it would be popular. Uh, and it's been sitting in my cupboard for a while, so it wasn't as popular as I anticipated. But you can never tell with these things. Ooh, 40% off. I do have to go to Spotlight and get some Minecraft fabric for another well, like one of the orders, but she only gave me the order yesterday. So I might go today, but I probably won't. Just because it's raining and I don't love driving in the rain. On the other hand, I would like to get the order started. So we'll see. I also want to get all of the uh, patterns I have coming out videos pre-done so that I can just release them when we're ready. Uh, I have three orders, uh, three patterns in the works at the moment. One is for the workshop, which is a really cool fold-over clutch wallet. Um, one is just like a standard simple bag, which is really good for beginners, but I've done some funky handles. And the third one is the Harridan, which is the men's bag, which is definitely an advanced pattern. There's a lot going on with that. But I've cut out two of them. Uh, I just have to record them. And I didn't do a video yesterday, for anyone that's wondering where my videos have gone. My husband didn't start work till one, and I can't record when he's home. He makes too much noise. Love him to death, but he's a very noisy individual. You also notice I don't use a lot of pins. Uh, that comes with practice, but it is worth practicing because it makes everything quicker. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but you will get there. All right. Oh wait, I need to put pockets on that. He doesn't mean to. He's just a loud human, which realistically is totally fine i just can't record a video when he is home is all at a recess to the pelican tote pelican totes a free pattern yeah i don't think i've done a pelican tote um video so i could probably do that all right so I measure six inches in from the edge and you get roughly even pockets. They're not perfectly even, but it's close enough. 
Nobody knows, so who cares, right? Um, so this is about the speed that I saw when I'm not recording. I know you don't believe it, but I do actually slow down for recorded videos so that I can explain better what I'm doing. Oh, so I've got four, I've um, only got four spots left for the workshop, so it's half full already. Um, I'm quite excited for the workshop, I'm not going to lie. I might cut out a pelican tote then. Although I can't promise it'll be today because I'm still contemplating whether to drive to Spotlight and get what I need for these orders or not. Ah. Oh, and for the workshop, for anyone that wants to come to the workshop, um, all of your exterior will be pre-cut out for you. And I'm going to show you a really cool way, and you'll get one to take home as part of your pack, um, a really quick way to do card slots without having to measure anything. So I will pre-make all of them for you, and they will be in your bag. I don't know how many more workshops I'll get to do before I move, but I am going to try and do at least a few more. So this is obviously the last one for the year. And then I might try and do one every two or three months or something. It means a lot more designing on my behalf, but that's probably okay. You have to go to Australia to study sewing. That's awesome. Oh, all right, zigzag scissors. When am I moving? At the end of next year. So we've got one more full year of me here. So one more full year of um, workshops. And then I will be moving. I'm pretty sure we're going to Townsville. Because all our preferences are there. And they did tell us that we can go there. So I'll be up in Townsville next. So if you're up there, that's where my workshops will move to. Tropical. Uh, and eventually I am going to, you know, have like a proper space that's permanently set up. And then I can do like weekly classes. That'd be awesome. Do I have a man's wallet with a coin section? Funny you should say that because my brother just broke his wallet that I got him four years ago. And so he's looking for a new one. So I'm probably going to design one for him. Because I have a lot of leather here and I've decided I need to use it because it's just wasting away. So my new clutch, which I've called Seductress, which is for the workshop, I'm actually going to make one out of leather, like actual hide with skin on it, and then do all the accents. I can't show you what that one looks like because uh, my regular customer already purchased it. The second she saw it in my group, she purchased it, so it's gone. But I will be making another one uh, in purple. So unfortunately I can't show it because I haven't done the video. Um, but oh, I also downloaded Zoom because you guys all want me to do like a Zoom video workshop, right? So where you can be at home but I can see you and help you and stuff. So I am going to host a free one to work out what the hell I'm doing. So we're going to do pouchels as a free Zoom workshop so that I can figure out what the hell's going on. Because I thought that would be fun. And the first one should be free because I really don't know what I'm doing. I imagine it's much like this, but I could actually talk back with you. Um, but we'll see. We'll see how I need to run it. So I will be doing a Zoom workshop. That probably won't be... It's definitely not this week. Um, it probably won't be till after my current workshop is done. Yes, yeah, so Townsville is like far north Queensland, and I currently live like mid-Victoria. So it will be a while, but I did used to live there. The weather's hot, but it's like consistently hot, so I can get used to it. And I can forever wear dresses, and I like that. Most of my wardrobe is cool dress, like awesome dresses that I have made myself. 
So I'm basing this down again for anyone that's actually following the pattern so that I can pretend it's one piece. It's all about being one piece. I'll have 500 people on Zoom. Is that a thing? I don't even know if you can cap it or anything. Like I literally know nothing about Zoom, which is why we're going to do one. We'll see how we go. Um, and then after that, you can, like for the other workshops, I'll obviously cap it at like, however many is comfortable on the screen um, so i'll be capping it at like i don't know 10 or 20 people um, and there will be a small fee because i will spend hours in front of the camera with you guys um and all my so every time i do a workshop i will then also do a virtual workshop so if you wanted to you know learn all the tips and tricks and stuff that's it. done Okay, so I'm going to put this right sides together and stitch. This is a half inch seam allowance. by the way will I will announce in my Facebook group so if you're not in my Facebook group uh, you should join if you're interested in all of these things because that is where I transfer all of my information I am terrible at sending out newsletters on my website I don't know if you've noticed but there's only ever been like three in the whole time that I've had my website I don't want to spam people because I personally hate that and I unsubscribe from everyone that does the spam um, but at the same time, I should probably start doing a few more, like one a month, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, also, for everyone that is not in my Facebook group, the Skull Bowls are back on my website, uh, and I will have more colours on Sunday. So I've got black, and I've got glow-in-the-dark white. It literally glows in the dark. It's amazing. So anyone that keeps, because I, the most asked question that I get on YouTube is, where do you get a Skull Bowl? The official answer is I now have them on my website. So if you haven't already purchased one, there's plenty there to purchase. Or you can wait till 4 p.m. Sunday and there'll be other colours up. It is running low, yes. confident I'm going to need another one of these so we're going to do it now just while we're here you know what I forgot to grab myself a drink that was very silly on my behalf I don't notifications until the afternoon if you put something in the morning that's fair um all releases of all stuff like anytime I get something in whether it's new or a refill or whatever will always go up on Sunday at 4 p.m. Now, if I've already got stock of it on there, I will happily just top it up and you'll never know. But if it's empty, I take it away. Um, so, for example, I just got in 20 mil, I want to say D-rings, and a couple of the colors were out of stock completely. So you won't be able to find that on the website now until Sunday at 4 p.m., but then all colors are now in stock. And I got more new hardware because I am ridiculous and I needed it for the Harridan pattern. So I have now ordered it in. And then eventually when the Harridan pattern comes out, I will also have kits. And because I'm talking so much, I just knotted up my bobbin. Good job. So the coloured skulls, there's already a bunch of them up. So you can already buy purple, blue, red and rainbow. The only colours going up, oh my god, look at that bobbin. It just had a meltdown. The other colours that are going up on Sunday are black and white. So the glow in the dark is the white. I will call it glow in the dark white so that you know. There we go. Good 
So yeah. So anyway, that's that. Um, I also, I did forget to put up the, these. I told you guys I would do it and I haven't. Um, so I am now going to have, these are zipper overlays that you can cut out of vinyl. They now have, they actually have seven different shapes. I've taken one out because one of them I am using for the seductress bag because I thought it was fabulous. Not that there others aren't, but I just, I was inspired by that one. So there will be others, they will come in a pack of seven. They have a half inch hole for um, your Tory template. So they fit perfectly over the Tory pocket. So if you've already bought the Tory pocket and you love zipper overlays, that's probably something that you're going to want. I haven't put it up on the website yet. I forgot the other day. I had a lot of other things going on, uh, but I will try and get onto it today if possible. That'd be nice. But again, depends on if I'm driving all the way to Spotlight, because my nearest Spotlight is like an hour away. And it's raining. And I don't know if I want to drive in the rain. Not that I can't, I just don't know if I want to. So unfortunately, um, I have noticed lately that the postage really sucks. Um, my skull balls, he sent four boxes apparently. So there's four boxes on its way. I have received two and I received each of those boxes a different week, but he sent them all at the same time. So I don't know when the rest are going to show up. Couldn't tell you. Um, also don't know what colors are in there. It's like a bit of a guessing game. Oh, metallic greens. to bob them today. Oh. I'm a little bit obsessed with templates. I have them all. I guess that's the perk of um, offering them. I have them all. I am ridiculous. It is fine. Um, I've also got more of the, the press dies for the cam press. So I'm getting the dies for the 201 press studs because I have decided that everything I supply that requires a cam press will now, I will offer the cam press as well. So you don't have to try and hunt where it lives because that wasn't fun for me to do. And I can't imagine it's fun for you either. So I have started ordering in everything you need for every die you need. Would you be willing to share about your sewing journey? I can let you know. What do you want to know? So I, okay, I started out making aprons, 50 style retro aprons, um, because I wanted one for Christmas one year. So I bought a pattern, which was a quick sew one, I want to say 175 or 155. It's one of those. Either way, it's like a circle skirt retro pattern. So I started making those for myself. Then my mate wanted one and somebody else wanted one. So I started selling them. Um, and then I started doing markets and my first market I sold nothing and it was terribly disheartening. Not a single thing. People didn't even look. And I had like a pretty good setup going I thought. Nobody even looked at mine. Uh, so I scrapped the idea of doing markets and went stuff this. I'll just sell them on buy swaps and sells. Uh, which was more successful. And then eventually I went, you know what? Let's make more and go to a market again. So I did another market and I sold like $300, which was amazing for my second ever market. Um, turns out in Townsville, they like people who repeatedly come back. If you just pop up and leave, it's almost like they think you're a scam. So anyway, I did that. And so then I started doing aprons and I was just doing aprons. And then I started doing like matching oven mitts and those little squares. I don't even know what they're called right now. I'm having a mental blank. But you know, like the squares where you grab the stuff out of the oven. So I started doing matching ones and sets and stuff like that. And then I got bored doing aprons because there's only so many times you can make the same apron over and over and over before you get bored. So then I went, oh, I'm gonna make myself a handbag. I'm awesome, I can do this. So I made Ethel by Swoon. Swoon was the first lot of patterns I come across and it was really cool. And then somebody asked me to make them a handbag and then that kind of snowballed. Um, and then I was just doing custom orders for handbags. Then, 
So that, that went on for a few years. I was doing aprons and handbags, and then the aprons kind of died off because people only need so many aprons before they're kind of done, which I get. You can only give so many gifts of aprons before you're over it. So then I switched to handbags and I was doing wallets. So I was only offering the NCW and I was doing a couple of swoon patterns, but nothing overly dramatic. I was just sticking to a few patterns that I knew I could do and off I went. Um, so then I moved here and I was doing the same thing. So I was doing markets up in Townsville where I had aprons and bags. And then I eventually phased the aprons out once I'd used up all the fabric that I bought for aprons and switched to just bags, uh, which was going great. And then I had some people that wanted to do like a wholesale order from me. So that was going great too. And then when I moved here, I got way less orders, which meant way less money. Uh, then COVID hit and I was bored because nobody's ordering or anything and there's only so much you should stock in your cupboard before it's then just a waste of space. So I went, you know what? I'm going to do a video. We'll see what happens. So I started my videos uh, and you guys love them. And then now I do videos. And then I'm like, with how much I altered patterns for custom orders, I went, I should make a pattern. So I made the, the whipper snapper because I wanted one to wear on my horse. Most of the patterns are, the most of the patterns that I've designed is because I want one. Like Tempress, I love my Tempress and I wanted one. Floozy, I wanted a little bag, so I designed a little bag. Um, the wallet, I'm like, I wanna make my own wallet. So I just, I design what I feel like for the most part. If I wanna make something, I will, and then I'll write a pattern while I'm at it. Uh, pattern writing is a lot harder than you might think. Oh, I struggle, not even going to lie, but we get there in the end. Oh, there you go. I did lingerie and baby clothes for a little bit, but that didn't really take off, so I stopped doing that pretty quickly, in fact. But yeah, so that's that's pretty much what I did. Um, I still love doing custom orders. I love designing patterns. It gets my creativity going. But it turns out my brain requires certain things. I'm a little bit like OCD when it comes to pattern writing. I need no one in my house. I need my space to be clean because clean space, clean mind, and I can focus on just that. I need to make sure like all the washing and stuff's done before I start because otherwise it's constantly in my brain that I need to get up and finish these things. So that's how I write patterns, which is why I can't write like a million of them. I'm actually quite impressed I get one a month done, if I'm honest. I've now got two tester groups. Um, so the, I started a second one because of the subscription box because stuff's going to come start coming out at the same time. Like the workshop and Harridan are coming out in the same month. So there'll be two patterns. So I required two groups. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I am self-taught with the software, which is called Inkscape, which is like a free, dodgier version of Adobe Photoshop. But it's free, and I don't really know what I'm doing, so it works out pretty well for me. I try to avoid excess costs of things so that I can keep my costs down, which is why my patterns are only eight Australian dollars. Because I don't have to pay for the software, I try to keep them cheaper. And anything where I don't have to physically draw the pattern pieces are $4. So that's how I've worked out my pricing. If I have to spend hours at a computer drawing shapes, it's then $8. Because you can never tell if something's popular or not. Like Strumpet, the Strumpet wallet is still way more popular than Wench. 100 times over. I sell a Strumpet at least twice a week. Because it is, I think it's a great pattern. Obviously, you guys too, you should keep buying it. So there you go. How old were you when you learned to sew? So I had a sewing machine when I was really young, but I used to just do like pillows and drawstring bags. It was nothing dramatic. I am completely self-taught. I've never been to a lesson. Um, I actually also, when I went to uni, I did like half a year and then quit but it was for teaching because I wanted to be a teacher 
So the fact that I'm now here teaching you to sew makes me giggle a little bit. I like teaching. I like inspiring others, which is why you see me rant on my Facebook group about literally everything I make. Because I'm trying to keep everybody inspired or, you know, come think outside the box for the same pattern. So that's why I'm so ranty and I just tell you everything that's going on in my group. Because I'm trying to stay inspiring. It doesn't matter if you don't buy from me. It doesn't matter if you've never bought a single pattern from me in your life. COVID was rough on a lot of people. And so I was hoping to, you know, help lift people out of said rush. And I think I did a pretty good job of it, to be honest. Um, the pattern, the pa other pattern designers that allow me to do videos are freaking awesome. I actually message them like privately, we chat. There is a lot of great designers. Um, and generally speaking, I try to make sure that I never kind of do something too similar to other people, which is why up until this month I haven't actually done a tote bag because I find a lot of totes very similar and I don't want to copy any of the other designers so like I'll never design a circle bag because there's the Magdalena it's it, circle bags are circle bags so I won't design another one because that lady has already done it she's done it well so I don't need to do it I wish there was more hours in my day. Or I just wish I had a magical elf that ironed everything for me. Or a magical iron that ironed itself. Take your pick. And as I learn new skills, I try and put them in a pattern so that I can teach you guys new skills. Or like random ideas my brain has. And yes, I ramble, and yes, I don't edit my videos to only be 15 minutes, but if I did that, I could almost guarantee you that I would, like, cut out a vital piece of information because I'm trying to over-edit it. So I just don't. Have to go to school. Okay. Bye. Have a lovely, safe school run. I'm triangling out these corners, which I still haven't come out a better name with. But yeah, so that's that's pretty much my sewing, my sewing story. I'm sure I've missed little bits here and there. Um, when I first started, my logo was different. It was a cupcake skull because I was doing aprons. But I have since changed it, since that's no longer relevant. I've made it a bit more generic, so it goes with everything. Um, and now I'm just... Like, I've got fabric tags that just showed up today. I've now got a branding iron, which I tried, and I have melted vinyl to. So I need to clean that before we play with that again. But I now have a branding iron with my logo that I got custom designed from China, which is pretty cool. Um, I can embroider my logo. So basically, I'm all about smattering my logo on everything. Just in case anybody ever forgets who I am. All right. I'm going to push that through. Morning, Jenny. Jenny is one of my moderators in my Facebook group, for anyone that doesn't know Jenny. Um, a branding iron. So, you know, like, on leather, you can, like, burn and stamp it in. It's literally that. It's attached to a soldering iron. It gets really, really hot, and then you just kind of melt it down. So, like, a branding iron, like a cow, except, obviously, I'm not going to do it to a live cow. That's horrible. I am doing it to the dead cow hide that I have hanging over there, or kangaroo, or whatever I've got. Ah, so this is a um, Urban Threads design. It's actually off-center. It slipped in the hoop, but I like the effect that it gave. Thank goodness, because I didn't want to have to buy another hoodie. What am I looking for? I need zippers. 
also going to use tubular zippers because that's what's in my cupboard. I was really into hand sewing before I bought a sewing machine. Um, and I used to use a domestic to make my aprons and they used to take hours. So I bought this machine. So I've had this machine for, it's older than Jesse for me. So Jesse's five. I've probably had it for six or seven years now. It's had two services since I've owned it. It is great. It was secondhand. I am not ashamed of that fact. Most of my stuff secondhand. In fact, all my big machines are secondhand. So the cylinder arm, this one, and my embroidery machine are all secondhand. And there is nothing wrong with them. You don't. Uh, the workshop's in my house. It is, yes. Why can't you buy designs from Urban Threads? That's what I'm looking for. I have so much zipper tape here. It's, in, it's intense. Oh, it might also be mine. I live in a crappy area for reception for internet. So I've turned off my Wi-Fi um, so that I'm actually using my phone internet data, but that's fine. I have like 20 gigs, so it'll survive. Melt, melt this end. So the workshop is $90 and I'm going to supply all of the hardware and the vinyl. And if you want a waterproof canvas, I will happily supply that. Or you can bring your own lining. So you will get the pattern ahead of time so that you can cut out all the lining pieces that you need. Um... But if you want waterproof canvas, I will happily supply that. It's just, and I pre-cut everything for the workshop. So you just come in and we can start sewing. Which I think is pretty awesome. And there will be swag in the bag. Because I'm obsessed with making stuff. So I don't know if you're in the group or not. But I recently made a legitimate key ring that is a bottle opener because you know sometimes you just need to walk away and have a drink so i have made these which i think are fabulous uh so everybody that comes to the workshop gets at least one of them and i'm gonna add a bunch of other stuff in as well oh that definitely sucks karina can't you just lie about your address not like they send stuff to your house. I know that's a really dodgy thing to do, but that's just a weird, that's weird. Oh yeah, you can get somebody else to pay for it and then just transfer them the, the money. That'd work. Have I checked Joanne's? So because I'm not in, uh, I haven't checked Joanne's. I didn't know that they shipped internationally. We, you know what? We didn't chat too much at the first workshop, but it is very overwhelming to hang out in my sewing room. And we spent about 45 minutes hanging out in my sewing room before we set up. So to avoid that problem again, I'm going to pre-cut everything so that we get it finished. You have to do your own ironing for the zipper pockets, but I'm going to make you an, a tool that helps you do the ironing because I'm cool like that. It's what I use, and I iron um, pockets. Uh, not pockets. I iron, what are they called? No, nah, I've lost the word. Card slots. There we go. I iron card slots in like 45 seconds now. So I will be making one for everybody that comes, and that will also be in your swag bag. Because I'm all about, I want to teach you guys all the stuff I do. 
I also have an insanely large box of HTV in multiple, multiple colours. So I am going to start designing more iron-on designs that are sewing theme related and have them on my website. Everybody loves some good swag. So that's happening. I've even bought a colour printer uh, so I can print off cool stuff and make more badges. So there will be more badges available and like magnets and stuff soon. And I understand that pocket is a little out of the way. It's about a it's about an hour out of Melbourne. Uh, but it's all freeway, so it's not too bad. One pocket. I am going to actually tack this down and base it along the base though. Like that. Are the card slots thing the same as you use in my videos? It is that. Uh, so I'm going to pre-make one. And it works for multiple patterns. I'd also like to let you know that. So it works for, what does it work for? I don't know, it works for a bunch of stuff. Under we go. I've also got uh, drink bottles and coffee mugs coming which is also exciting. So there'll be legitimate ones, legitimate ones. Because I'm really trying to embr embrace the legitimate because I think it's cool. I was very early today. Um, I have stuff to do and I'm still trying to decide if I'm driving all the way to Spotlight or not. I went to Bendigo Spotlight the other day and I was not super inspired by any of the fabric I saw. But I'm hoping that it's just because they were empty and not because this season's not cool. But we'll see. I'm not actually going for um, to fill my stash cupboard because I've been doing very well at getting that down. But I do need to get this Minecraft fabric. And yes, I could get it posted. But, or I could pick it up today and have the order out by the Friday. If you all want Mother to come to the workshop, she can come. But we, she will not be a distraction. We will get this finished. I am on a mission. So the workshop goes for, it goes from 10 o'clock until whatever time we finish it. So I've put it down for like three hours, but if we go over that, that is also fine. Because uh, I want to see it finished. I want cool photos. I'm going to, in fact, mum, your job is officially a photographer if you're coming. Because last time, I didn't take a single photo. I was too focused on doing other things. So if you're coming, you can be a photographer. So that we actually get photos this time around. Okay. Pockets done. At the moment, it is 9am here. So this is normally when I would start my videos. the topic of randomness I want to show you guys the difference I've cut it out for a, another video that I'll get to eventually so this is my waterproof canvas that I stock and this is the equivalent of Ottotex or the 600 denier so this is the thicker one that they get in the states so I don't know if you can tell but it is way thicker like way thicker 
I got some for a custom project for somebody, um, which it was expensive. So I can get this in stock if you in Australia want it. However, it is pricey. Like very pricey. Um, but so anyway, that's the difference. This one's floaty. This one's way stiffer. It almost feels like PVC. It's so thick. But anyway, that is an option. I've been meaning to do this pattern for a while. It's the All So Petite First Aid Pouch. It is all cut out, ready to go. Um, but so are a lot of things. I'll get there when I get there. <sighs> right. So we're going to stitch and back stitch to lock it in. And in my brain, every time I say lock it in, my brain goes, lock it in, Eddie. Uh, from the show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire when I used to actually watch television. So these are the parts where the cord goes through. Now, if you're using a thin cord, what you can actually do is fold this over and then again so that you've got a littler channel. Um, but I've been putting quite thick rope in there because I think I'm cool. So I'll be making mine a bit thicker. <laughs> That's cool. I went and visited my horses this morning, for anyone that wasn't here at the start of the video. It's going to be a top of 14 and a low of 5 today, so I went out and put their rugs on. It was spitting with rain, and I had to chase my husband's horse because he decided he didn't want his rug on. So that was fun. So the thinner one is 300 denier, and I have an even thinner one, which is 210. So I can't get pink in the thickness that I want. Nobody that I can find of suppliers will make it. So my pink and my grass green are thinner than the other ones, uh, but I do state that in the description that nobody ever reads. I promise it is there. Because I get a lot of emails when people have bought a lot. They're like, one feels thinner. And I'm like, it definitely is. Uh, but I do put that in the description because I want complete transparency with my business. I don't want any of you to think that I've like botched you in any way, shape or form. Uh, so I do write down the denier, which is the thickness. I don't know how they work that out. But anyway, I don't actually know what denier means, but that's what they call it. So that's what I tell you. Of our outer and then these now when you clip this you want to make sure that the print is gonna sit right way up when we do it so we want it to sit up like this 
So that's what we want. So then we flip it down on itself like that. That is quite important because otherwise uh, that part's upside down, which is just weird. All right, I'm clipping it down. This is one of those few things that I'm probably not going to baste in place. I'm actually going to just clip it and then add in the lining. Do, 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 do. So that way, right way up to right way up and then flip her down. So I have to make a lot of these bags. I actually bought a whole bunch of fabric to make them in time for Christmas presents. So maybe I should just spend a week making the same bag over and over and over. Get it done and get the fabric out. I bought like, I think I've got five other pieces sitting there. But in saying that, I really want to make some vixens for the website. And some temptresses with embroidery. There's a lot of things I want to do. Who are we kidding? Alright, so now we're going to shove this in. It's not really a right and a wrong way because the lining is uh, symmetrical, so it doesn't matter. I did see, I did make it to the nail salon and I got quite uh, pointy nails this time and I regret nothing. These are amazing to work with for sewing. I'm finding, I don't, I don't want them any pointier and I definitely don't want them any longer than this. Uh, but I am finding that they are fabulous to, like, poke at stuff and pick off, like, sticker backs and stuff like that. So this is a siren, which is my beach bag, which is why it's called siren. I thought I was being quite clever there. Um, next year, by the way, for anyone that doesn't know, all my patterns next year are going to be named after old-timey insults. Because otherwise you'll never get a chance to say them again. And I think that's a waste. So they will all be old-timey insults next year. And depending on how many awesome ones to come up with, might be the year after as well. Who knows? I refuse to call my bags after flowers. I just refuse. Yeah, I worked in a um, bacon factory. And you weren't allowed to have fake nails there either. Food prep, it's just not allowed. So I'm making sure that this, I'm pretty sure I've just put all my pins on, all my clips on upside down, like the wrong way, but whatever. It is what it is. It is the beauty of working for myself and not in the food industry that I can have my nails. Um, but they really do help with sewing because they do not help with horse riding at all. In fact, they're more of a hindrance for the horses, but they help for sewing, so I get them. It is spring here right now. Ooh, insulted. That could be fun. I'm really sorry my internet sucks. I am on my phone one, which is supposed to be the best, but I can only do what I can do, unfortunately. So I'm doing a half inch seam allowance at the top here. Um, and the reason I can go so fast with this now is I got a plate that has them kind of etched into it. It was one of the smartest decisions I ever made for $7 or whatever it cost me on eBay. Uh, and even though that this is not vinyl, I am still using the Teflon foot. I never take it off, in fact, unless I've got need like a different shaped foot. For standard sewing, I always use my Teflon foot. I do love nails. I mean, yes, it's another expense, but it really does help with the sewing. And I feel, my fingers feel extra protected because they're that much further away from a needle. 
which is also possibly where my um, confidence comes from sewing so fast, because my fingers are nowhere near that needle. I am never worried I'm going to get my actual finger. I might break a nail, but I can just go get it fixed. So, I don't know, it's probably where my confidence comes from. Straight lines are always faster. Needle down, last curve. This curve is quite a tight curve, so you can tell that I've slowed down quite a bit. And I'm helping to bring it around. And back to the start and back stitch. Done! Is this domestic friendly? Uh, I'd say yes. There's no foam, there's no harsh inter like harsh interfacing at all. I'd say yes, this is domestic friendly. Um, and this machine is technically not like a heavy bag making machine anyway, because it doesn't have the top walking foot. So this machine can't do a lot of stuff. Because it's just not that strong. It's kind of like a it's kind of between domestic and industrial bag making this. Yeah, I'm going to come up with, like, the most outrageous insulted names. I promise. That is my promise to you. I will pick the most outrageous names for all of my bags. I can't help it. I have to be weirdly different. Like, Carissa McKnight um, from Needle and Anchor. All of her patterns are named after, like, oceany, piratey stuff. And I love that. She's picked a theme, she's running with it, and I'm here for it. I haven't actually looked up names and written any down. I did type in old-timey insults into Google, and it come out with a whole bunch of cool ones, like nincompoop. I am going to write a pattern that is called the nincompoop, for no other reason than it is really fun to say. So that's happening. I'm just cutting off these corners so that it, I can top stitch it easier because I now have to go and top stitch this and I want it to behave itself. These are not my normal uh, bulk cutting scissors. Usually I'll use my class A but they're over there. So we're going to have a pattern called the nincompoop and then there's going to be a whole bunch of heap like just ridiculous names and words. Maybe one year I could do all the longest words in the English language. <laughs> Again, for no other reason than I'm an idiot. And shove it straight back inside. So the reason we put the interfacing in here is because that will now hold for a very long time. I also want my pokey stick. I love my pokey stick. This is a flute cleaner for anyone that's never seen it in a video. Yeah, I'm not doing that, Mum. I want people to be able to buy the pattern. If nobody can tell them what the pattern's called, how will anyone know what it is? Put that out. one year I could pick a word and then go around to different languages and call it that. That'd be funny. Right, that's that done. So first things first, I'm going to baste it along the bottom and you want to line up your seams. So you want your exterior seam and your lining seam to be the same. And I'm doing a nice small seam allowance. Again, also important. I'm also going to run out of bobbin thread soon, but I have prepared for that with my other You might be wondering, 
wondering, why did I put the pockets in the bottom of the bag instead of at the top like you normally do? And the official answer for that is, is because people are less likely to rummage through your bag to steal stuff. So if they can't see the zipper pocket, they don't know it exists. It's like an almost, it's like an anti-theft deterrent thing feature. Oh, I've definitely run out of bobbin thread. Tell you I could hear it. I don't think I'd get away with the word doodle on Facebook. Uh, it had a hissy fit at me when I used the word wench. It kept like refusing all my posts until I had to go and actually explain to them that is the name of my pattern. They didn't like hussy either, if I'm honest. Hussy and wench got me blocked on Facebook a couple of times. Not that I care. I will continue to do what I want. No Facebook group's going to tell me off. Alright, where was I? All the way back here. That's disappointing. That's what happens when I don't pay attention. Needle down. Flip. And back to the start. So again, I'm all about everything just being one. We're gonna top stitch. Now I turn it inside out. I picked whipper snapper because y'all whipper snapper from like when old people say it. That was my first instinct when I named my first ever pattern. What does that say about me? <laughs> it says I have issues. That's what it says. But I'm pretty okay with that. We all know I have issues, yet you're all still here. So doodling is also, doodling is drawing, uh, uh, but yeah, it has a secondary meaning over here. Nora the doctor bag I plan on one day designing a doctor bag with a frame first off I have to find where I can bulk get some frames for everyone because I won't make a pattern if I can't supply your needs that's just silly um, but it is on my list of things to do I'm gonna probably aim for next year or the year after you just gotta bear with me on that one all right so now she's top stitched I've decided it's a she today, apparently. Where is my base? So this is where all your clips come in. Um, and we are doing binding. For anyone that doesn't know about this pattern, because I'm making the bottom a clear mesh, this is a vinyl mesh. Um, so it's, it's thicker than like your normal fly screen. Um, it's made of vinyl, obviously. That's why it's called vinyl mesh. Um, and it's so the sand can fall out of your bag, or if you've got a towel that's literally dripping wet, the water will soak out and it's less likely to go moldy. So I did, I put a lot of thought into this bag, weirdly enough. And the pockets go not where you'd think. So the ends go here along the long edge instead of the short one. I did have somebody install it the incorrect way, but it does work the other way. It's just this way that's easier to carry. So that's why I do it this way. 
clip and clip and then we're going to work our way around the bag this is true everybody does have issues mine are just a lot more public because you all hear me ramble all the time but it's cool You haven't all left yet, so that's a good sign. Do, 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 do. Can you use wire hangers for a frame? I could, but that would require people with bad arm strength to have to bend it into shape. And I understand that a lot of people won't be able to do that I could do it I can jimmy up almost anything between me and my husband we can come up with anything I need but to make them to sell in a sellable quality is a very different story I could definitely jimmy something up if it was just going to be me making the pattern and selling it to people for example the Nora doctor bag I actually cut up pieces of aluminium metal like a like a strip of it and stick that in the top instead of the boning that they suggest because i like that top to be insanely firm i think it looks cooler and so that's why i do it um but i wouldn't sell them because to file the edges i just drag it along concrete until it's not sharp and it's not very professional to look at like, I could bend it, but I have quite a lot of upper body strength. But if somebody like my mother wanted to make one, she wouldn't be able to bend a wire coat hanger to the proper shape, I wouldn't think. And so then she wouldn't be able to make it. And then she'd be upset with me if my mother sewed. She is just my example. Sorry, mother. Do, 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 do. Right, there we go. Bottom is on ish. Um, oh, good. I even have matching blue binding. So I buy this from Vibeman Threads, which is why I don't offer it on my website because it's the same place I get my thread from. Um, and I have it in a lot of different colors. Basically, I tried to buy the same color as all my lining pieces for this exact moment. But first I'm going to base this down because my life is easier when I base things in place. Might actually bring that back over here. So I'm basting it at like a quarter inch. Because I don't want to see these stitches later. Uh, but I want to make sure that it's actually going to grab and hold everything down. And then we're going to lift this up as a 3D object that it is. Oh, that's a badge I should make. It's a 3D object. Huh. Do you know I do that off camera too? I do that to myself. That's how insane I've become. I don't even mean to. It slips out. It's fine. Fine. Just crazy. Round and round and round we go. Do, 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 do. Back to start and backstitch. Boom. Now. Probably, oh actually it's not set up. If I wasn't recording and if I could be bothered, I'd go and change my cylinder arm over so that it would, it takes this, it's got like a special little thing and so you just feed it through and it stitches itself on. Um, but because this is a video and because it's not set up for that, we won't be doing that today. So I'm going to clip it on instead, which is what most of you would have to do anyway. But it is definitely quicker with the little attachment I 
I could get some for just me, but I'm not designing a bag that I can't then supply you all the stuff for. So, for example, the little Harridan bag that is not yet out, I just bought hundreds of these things, which are like little half inch swivel clips because they are needed for the pattern. So I have bought all of these in all six different finishes uh, so that when you want to make the bag, you can get the pattern and the kit from me if you so desire. If you live near me, or you know, when I say near me, in Australia near me. Uh, so everything I use, I supply. And that is becoming quite costly and I need to like stop having so many cool ideas. But at the same time, we all know that's never going to happen. Ever. Oh, that would be cool. Pokey sticks. I could do that. I love my pokey sticks. I should get some made. You know what? I'm probably now going to go and hunt that. Custom pokey sticks would be awesome. They won't be here by the next workshop though. Maybe I could do it for the one after. Everybody gets a pokey stick. So I'm folding this in half, by the way, and you can easily tell half because it's got kind of lines going through it. Don't try and do this without an attachment and without clipping. You will wreck it. I have tried. Hi, Tracy. We are making the Siren Beach Bag again. I know I've done this alive a lot, but it's an order, and I literally have four orders for the same style bag, so you get to see the Avengers one. I'm doing another one in Lego fabric, one in Minecraft, and one in like a tropical beach bird. It's got like a flamingo and some fancy tropical flowers and stuff. So we're getting there. We're nearly there. Oh. I just had a thought. I should see if Billy 50 will come to a workshop. I reckon I could convince her. She's got more patterns coming out soon too, by the way. For anyone that doesn't know. She's, she's made it. She just needs to write the pattern for it. Hi Kay, I'm quite early today, um, just because I've got other things I need to do as well today. Like I need to finish writing the seductress pattern. I haven't done that yet. All right, so she's now clipped on and I'm just gonna overlap a little bit. It's always good to overlap. It means you won't have a gap. And that to me is important. I'm going to put the clip there and then I'm going to start sewing at the gap. But first we need to change the thread colour over because it will look ridiculous in black. I will see what kind of convincing I can do. And see if Billy 50 wants to pop in and make it a net, like a, an entrance. She dyed her hair red. It looks amazing. Not that you guys probably knew what she looked like beforehand, but still. Oh no, I've put a knot in it. So I'm a different kind of clever today, apparently. <sighs> there it goes. Chop the knot out. I can ask her. I can't promise she'll come, but I can definitely ask her. She is feeling a bit better, uh, but she won't be reopening her website. We're just going to leave it on my website. And that works out for me and her. And you can just ask me the questions. I do still have to do some of her patterns as videos because I know I haven't done, like, the TV backpack isn't done yet. But I'll get there. Been a bit busy writing patterns this month, if we're honest. Three in a month. 
That's a big ask. Uh, and the more patterns I write, the less videos you're going to see per week, just so you all know. I'm also, I need to write before, between now and Christmas, I need to write the um, lunchbox pattern because I've got a mate that wants to order a lunchbox anyway. So I'll be writing that pattern and then that will be the next subscription box. It's all just, you know, a lot. There's a lot going on. There is never a dull day in this house. I can promise you that. So the way I'm doing this, and you can't see because this is in the way, I use this finger and I push against the edge to make sure that it's not slipping out as I'm sewing. So basically my finger is against the, you can't see, my finger is against the foot on the outside, pushing that binding to make sure it stays where it's tied. Because that helps it from slipping. Obviously, and the clips help. But that helps too. Do I slow down? Not really. Um, I'm a very energetic person. I got a workout outfit yesterday, so I randomly decided I want to go for a run. Because, I don't know, I had energy to go for a run. The more healthy I get, the less sleep I require, which means even more stuff I'm doing. Um, so, no, I don't really stop. I'm not working myself to the bone, though, so don't think I'm over here stressing and writing patterns and going, oh, my God, I can't get it done, because that's not what I'm doing. You get a pattern when it's done and not before. I do try to have one a month, but if it's late, too bad. Uh, but, no, I don't really slow down. Don't need to yet. When I'm inspired, I'm inspired. because it's a 3D object, people, and if you hold it as such, you're going to have a much better success rate of getting around this curve. I promise. I will look at the comments in a second for anyone that's typing stuff. see annoying me right so now that I've done that way you actually need to turn it over and make sure you got the outside I'm fairly confident I did because I did that finger thing uh, it helps the base is in doesn't that look fabulous against the edge of the binding you'll be fine and do like a top stitch for like an eighth of an inch from the edge of it binding is only tricky if you fear it lots of people fear binding and i have noticed that with a lot of patterns um don't fear the binding the binding will not hurt you you can make this bag without binding but you need to do an exterior and interior um thing you can't put the mesh and i wanted the mesh I think the mesh is like the smart part of the bag. Just my thoughts on that, but whatever. You just want to push it all out so that it sits nice and flat. Those curves are quite lovely. See, look. And I haven't finished pushing it out yet. 
And so then on the inside of the bag, look how pretty it sits. Don't be afraid of the binding. That's the bag done. I just need to thread the um stuff through. So that binding is called binding. It's literally called 25 mil binding on the Vibeman Threads page. Polyester binding, I reckon. Poly binding. Something like that. But it's definitely binding, and it's not the cotton one. You don't want the cotton one in a bag that's going to get a lot of water. It will rot. That is bad. You don't want that. So this is the next one I'm doing for anyone that's interested. Uh, so we're going with a light blue. And this is the awesome fabric. So this is from Spotlight. It is actually a... I think this is actually designed to make um, board shorts. So it's like that waterproofy fabric. But I did have to interface it because it's super floppy. But that's going to be another pretty beach bag. See, it's got all the tropical stuff going on. I like to think my bags don't necessarily look like me. I know a lot of pattern designers, they have an aesthetic. I don't feel like I've got one. I'm all over the place. Absolutely all over it. There is no kind of design flow with me. I am left, right and centre. Although I do use a lot of grommets. I love grommets. I don't know why, but I do. My, f my computer turned itself off mute. That's trippy. Anyway, thank you all for popping in while I made one of my many bags I have to make. Um, good present. Good Christmas present. Beach bag. Or the, the Lego one I have to make is actually for a, a little girl to take all her karate stuff in. Uh, so hefty's on the outside for the main panels, and these ones just had woven medium um, because these didn't need to be as thick, so you take away some of the bulk by using a thinner um, interfacing. But so long as the main part of the bag is, it will stand up by itself. I am not touching that. Thank you all for popping in. Um, I hope you got an insight to whatever you wanted to know today. Um, I will see all of you at the, ret uh, not the retreat, the workshop, if you are coming to that. Otherwise, I will probably do a video tomorrow, unless I end up going to Bend uh, Shepparton. It could go either way. I don't know. We'll see. I also have to pre-record some of those. So this one is the, this is Seductress, not that it looks like much. Uh, but the lady has chosen, so it's actually a custom lot, so she chose purple vinyl, with this really cool multicolored, um, this one's from Spotlight. It's like a dragon scale or snake or whatever, but it's multicolored, so it changes color between green and teal. So that's going to be the accent, which I think is just fabulous. And there's an ID slot for those that don't know on the other side, but still. So that's going to be very cool. So they will be videos coming up. But I'll have to pre-record them. So you'll probably notice weird things going on with my nails. But that'll be why. Alright. Have fun, guys. Boop.